Turn on the lights because the Danbury Westerners are playing tonight. They'll be swinging their bats and they'll be hitting home runs. It's a night of excitement and family fun. Welcome, sports fans, to another edition of Westerners Roundup. Welcome to the Westerners Roundup. I'm Brian Arizari. I'm back. I had a nice little trip down in Atlanta, and now we're back for Danbury Westerners baseball. The boys are playing some good baseball right now, 6-4 and four here in the NECBL, and we got some of the key contributors uh, to why the team has had so much success here early on, and we're going to get to know them just a little bit. It's actually the University of Dayton's three players, three of the four uh, on our squad, and it's going to be three pitchers, and I'm glad to welcome number 31, Mike Hosschild, a right-handed pitcher, as well as number 20, he's a closer, Ian Gardick, and also uh, the stud pitcher, the player of the week in the NACBL this past week, number 24, uh, Bryce Lawrence to the show. Welcome, boys. You are the key contributors to why the team has had success. Even though you don't drive in the runs, you make sure that you shut down uh, a lot of the people. Uh, let's start with you, Bryce. Pitcher of the week, and you had a showing where you struck out 15 guys. That's really a lot of work to strike yeah. out some people. You really want to pitch to contact, but uh, why, do you, why have you had so much success this past week? Um, basically, we just, me and the catcher, Mike Williams, we just, had a really good game plan and we just went in there and mixed up, kept uh, all the hitters off guard and just mixed up our pitches really well. And they had no idea what, what was coming. So you pitched three pitches, you have a, a fastball, two and a four seamer, curveball and a changeup, correct? So yep. um, each time that you're coming up to pitch against somebody, you're trying to keep them off guard. So the next time they come up, is there a new game plan? Does the, the catcher signal you, like, let's start them off speed because we started off with a fastball last time? Um, I don't think it's as much of that, but it's just like situational stuff. But also, I mean, Mike's behind the plate, so he can tell if like the hitters, what the hitters, if they're close to the plate, far from the, like away from the plate, and like what to do in different situations. All right, so you're, you're the pitcher of the week. Let's move over to Mike. Um, Mike, you're kind of the number one guy, but you've also had some good success, just like Bryce. Uh, what is the uh, chemistry that you have with your catcher, and what, ha why have you been so successful? Mike's been catching me too. Michael Williams from Kentucky. Uh, pretty much just pound zone fastball, and I get a lot of ground ball outs. Just quick and easy. So you you like you're not the strikeout guy. Yeah, I mean I almost had as many strikeouts as Bryce, and I pitched uh, six more innings than him, seven more innings. So. All right. So longevity. Are you, right, you guys gonna have to learn from each other? Yeah. So yeah. strikeouts. You pitch a lot. Ground ball pitcher. Yeah. More innings. Mix it in, yeah. Mix it in. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the closer, Ian. Uh, you've come in. You, you've had some good success closing guys down. I look it down. Uh, 2.45 ERA. You're 1-0. And um, you have one save on your list. So what kind of success have you had um, off of this, watching these guys have such good success, and you have to wait your turn mm -hmm. to come in late in the game? Yeah, I mean, I just, I just watch what the guys do. I feed off the other guys, and, you know, they just say keep a level head, keep it simple. And, you know, I rely off my two-seam fastball, and I throw that a lot and just, you know, attack right away. And uh, I've had some good success lately, and it's been working well. So the common denominator for you guys, a couple things. You guys continue to win, uh, but you're also uh, from the University of Dayton. So Ian and Bryce, you guys are going to be sophomores next year, and Mike, you're going to be a junior. So... Uh, talk about the university, why you guys chose that, and how your baseball program there has helped you become who you are. You know, we'll start here with you, Bryce. Um, well, Dayton recruited me pretty hard, and uh, when I went down for my official visit, it was really nice there, and like they have a really community-based area, and everyone's like really accepting of everything. So when I left there, I was just felt really good about the university. So just decided to go there. So you go from a you go from a big city in Chicago to. I've never been to Dayton, but I know what Ohio is like, so it, it must be a little bit of a change um, for you. <laughs> well, I'm from like the northwest suburbs. I'm probably okay. an hour outside Chicago, so it really wasn't a big change because I only live in a town of about 10, 12,000 people, so it okay. wasn't really that big of a change. All right, and similar for you, Ian, you're from Illinois. Yep, very um, similar. So how was the <coughs> promotion by the University of Dayton, and then also how was the transition? Uh, the transition was fairly easy. Um, you know, it's like Bryce said, the community's great. They rally behind, you know, and uh, we preach uh, community is huge with us. We always are trying to give back, always looking for 
new ways to help the community out and you know camps or whatnot and uh, it's great you know it's a family-like atmosphere you know at the school everyone's real close and it's a small enough where you're gonna say hi to someone at least walking to class yeah so it's so, not one of those places maybe like a Syracuse where you're one of 32,000 people no yeah. not at all you, you you definitely see faces that you know every time when you're walking to class and you know people always say hi and nice. it's a very friendly atmosphere now, Mike, you have a little bit of a different story. You didn't have to travel too far. Uh, uh, right in your backyard. Tell us a little bit about your story, how you went to University of Dayton. Uh, well, my dad's the SID there, the Sports Information Director. So he And he's been working there for like 30 years. So I pretty much knew I was going to go there once yeah. the coaches were like, hey, you know, he can come in and pitch for us. So I was like, all right, you know, I get to go there for free. So you, I would assume that you've pitched off that mound plenty of times before you've actually pitched in an important yeah, game. Yeah, I played there a lot. A little kid. I played there a lot in summer ball. Um, you know, they just camps and stuff too. Yeah. I went there ever well, since. Was I there anything 12. else that was on your plate that you might have want to venture out and you know go away from your hometown? But what was it about Dayton that you wanted to stay there? I understand that your dad works there, but yeah. there had to be some other factors. Um, well, I was pretty much just really comfortable with the coaching staff since I've okay. been to camps there since I was 11. You know, they knew me pretty well. With them, yeah. I've been working with their pitching coach for a very long time. He knew uh, he knew what I did well and what I didn't do well, so. I just felt like I could come there and have the most success. <laughs> all right, so you guys all go to the University of Dayton. You guys are young. You're kind of moving on up the ladder and you're going to be a junior. Let's talk about how you guys went from Illinois, Ohio, a combination of both out here to Danbury and how that came about. Um, basically, during the summer, we just got an email from our coach saying that uh, Danbury was looking for people to come out and play. So it's like NECBL is like an up-and-coming league he said so I was just like yeah why not just you know go there see what happens all right Ian yeah the same thing happened you know I got a phone call from the head coach saying you know it was a good opportunity and if I didn't want to stay close to home you know this would be a, a good team to be on and I jumped on it right away um, you know the opportunities here are great and to be accepted by a community like this is wonderful to have Mike uh, I talked to my pitching coach after so I played in the Great Lakes last year. Okay. And I had a lot of success there. And it's like, you know, like this team, Danbury Westerners look for players, and since you pitch so well, the NECBL is a lot better league than Great Lakes. So, yeah. You know, you can get a lot uh, more exposure out there. And I was like, yeah, sure, we'll go, go play there. Nice. So we're here in the Westerners Roundup. We're talking to uh, key contributors from the pitching staff on the uh, from the <coughs> University of Dayton on why the team is six and four currently right now for the Danbury Westerners. Um, so you guys talked about how you got here to Danbury, but normal college kids work like two or three jobs in the summer. You make some money so you can spend it while you're at school. And so you guys went from playing in a college season to continuing to play baseball somewhere else. And it's not like you guys get paid here. So what is the attraction? Just, you know, trying to get to the next level, trying to go, you know, make it to the bigs or what have you. So just, you know, got to play as much as possible, get as as you possibly can to make that next step all right i think the biggest thing is is you know getting away from home you're not going to be at home when you're playing at the next level so everyone's looking to seek to get that as much simulated stuff as you can for the next level and uh being away seeing new places getting to meet new people and learning stuff on the way yeah do you feel that that too mike because i mean you know you stay you're basically at home at at Dayton and so now you're venturing out but like you said you had some great success with Great Lakes. Yeah it was another thing that he said he's like this will be the first time that you're ever really away from home yeah and kind of get you ready for maybe if I go on to the next level instead of just being around Dayton my whole life. <laughs> well talking about the next level um, this is a league that's compared a lot to the Cape Cod League but in Cape Cod there you travel about 15 minutes you know the stadium the stadium here you know you play a team in Vermont you got to get on a bus you have to make sure you eat make sure you pack everything make sure you don't lose your belt you know things like that so um, I know it's just been six games you guys had a couple road games how has your body responded or ha have you noticed any change in your body on playing every day but also traveling at the same time um, it gets pretty tiring you know we're sleeping in a lot waking up at 11 12 o'clock in the afternoon so I mean you kind of lose half a day right there but yeah. Other than that, it hasn't been too much of a change. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. You know, we, we're used to the road trips uh, from at school. You know, obviously you are tired afterwards, and 
you just got to keep a, a good attitude, and it's it's a lot of fun to be out here playing. You say used to the road trips. I work for the University of Hartford. Division One athletes travel very cush. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think this is similar, but I mean I, I understand the distance yeah. and things like that. But um, you know, coming from a Division One school, when you're traveling, I mean, you guys travel pretty well. Everything's catered, all that good stuff. You know, here's a little bit of a different story. You're, you're actually living the life of what a minor league ball player does. You know, does. Yeah, exa exactly. It, it is. It's a lot more strenuous. You know, you don't have all the perks and the glamour, but yeah. you know, at the next <laughs> level, that's not going to happen. So it it's kind of a wake up call, and it, it it humbles you on what you are afforded at school, so you realize what you have. Yeah, Mike. I mean, what has been the biggest obstacle for you with the traveling? Have you run into any problems that you might have? You know, Bryce talks about sleep. Um, have you run into any sort of issues, or is it just? This is what baseball is. I mean, it's pretty much this is what baseball is. That's kind of how uh, we we took all buses on trips this year. We didn't like. Oh, okay. We didn't fly anywhere, so it's pretty similar. I mean, these are a lot more like further trips, but we had a couple like pretty far ones for Dayton. So I mean, it's pretty. It's kind of normal, I guess. But yeah, it's nothing too bad. You guys are playing pretty good ball. Um, you have. 10 games underneath your belt. You're two games above 500, currently tied for second place. But this is the team they have been saying for the past four years that on paper this is what you guys can do. And we're obviously seeing it here with a great record. From a pitching standpoint, you guys are way ahead of the game because pitching in college is similar to pitching here, and these guys are making the adjustments <coughs> with bats. So pitchers don't bat. They play with the DH here. Uh, talk about the league and talk about coming from a pitching standpoint, how much success you guys have and how much you use that to your advantage when you prepare for each start or, you know, you know when you're preparing to come on in. Um, we're pretty, I mean, it's pretty comfortable pitching here because all three of us, we, we got a lot of innings this year. Even as freshmen, me and Ian still had a lot of innings. And some of the other guys who are struggling, they really haven't pitched a lot that in the past year. They only had like six or seven innings where I had 40 innings this year and Ian had like, I think 20 maybe. Yeah. So you're a little more comfortable. And some of the guys are still, you know, getting used to, you know, college hitters where ever anyone can hit like a fastball. So. So Bryce talks about <coughs> how you, Ian, you pitched about 20 innings in college, and now you're coming in kind of in that closer role. Is that something that you were in college, or is it something new that you're trying to work with? Um, that's something that uh, we did dabble with in uh, college. I did did have the opportunity to close out two games at school for us. Um, was used to coming into later innings, so it's not much of a change. Um, you know, a little bit more pressure now because you're actually seeing it more. But, you know, it's just keeping it simple, relying on your strengths and, and believing in yourself and attacking. Mike, I know every pitcher's mound is essentially the same, you know, 60 feet, 6 inches, but, you know, each field has its own different sort of mound. Um, what kind of adjustment have you had? Any problems adjusting to the hill here? And um, what kind of advantage do you think that you have against the hitters here? Um, I haven't thrown off the mound in Danbury yet. Every game I've pitched has been on the road so far, so I'm just kind of I'm not really sure what to expect. I know yeah. it's there's a couple holes here and there. Yeah, so you're going to make a start tonight. Yeah. So, so we'll uh, see what what kind of adjustment are you going to make? Have you gone out and just kind of? pitched off of it just to get used to it or uh, are you just going to kind of work on the fly tonight i'll just kind of go <laughs> go out and see what happens uh just attack with my fastball you know get get hitters out yeah um going back to the league is there any team that kind of stands out or any specific hitters that you guys remember uh either facing them that down the road you're going to have to remember when they come to danbury or you face them on the road any people that stand out? i know it's still kind of early um, after facing Holyoke, um, I only gave up three hits. So, I mean, I, if I face them again, I'll be feeling pretty good, have, have a high confidence. So, I don't really think I have anything to worry about if I, play, if I pitch against Holyoke again. So. I mean, I just try and build off every, every time I'm on the mound, I just try and keep building. Um, remember the stuff you did well and the stuff that you did poorly. Try and build off of that. But otherwise, there hasn't been anyone really standing out. Um, you just try and rely on your strengths and trust that your strengths will get out their strengths. Uh, really, the only person that's hit me hard this season is a uh, four-hitter for North Adams. And then his last at bat against me, I uh, threw a fastball away, and he just rolled over on it. So pretty much just do that, throw him away, get him weak ground, ground ball outs. Let's talk about the offense a little bit because, you know, without the offense, you guys can't really win games. You know, people need to score some runs. <coughs> um, Derek Ingui. Third baseman is just absolutely on fire right now. 
Uh, let me see if I can find. He's batting 500. He's had 20 ABs, six runs scored, 10 hits, one double, one home run, and six RBIs and 14 total bases. Talk about playing with Derek. Because you got to remember, you guys are from the University of Dayton, so you know each other. But uh, you talked about your catcher. He's from Kentucky. Uh, Derek is from Franklin Pierce. So how is the chemistry? Because you guys got to Danbury, get to know each other. We need to play some baseball. So you know. So how has that transition been? Um, it's been pretty good. We've the team's gelled really well. Um, like the first week, we had an away game at Keene, so that was like a three or four hour bus ride. So we all just you know hung out on the bus, you know, talking about whatever we're talking about and just hanging out. Baseball. Yeah, every, <laughs> everyone gets to know each other pretty quick. It's just like you know going to college when you first get there, you got to make friends, new friends, and meet people. So. Yeah, so you're, for, you're forced same. to talk to people. Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Yeah, and so the bus ride's probably a good thing. You guys, you know, did you put on a movie the first time you guys took a road trip, or was it just, we're not putting on a movie, we got three hours, get to know each other? Well, actually, we didn't have any movies to put on. <laughs> yeah. No one, everyone forgot ah, to bring movies. So, out. yeah, so we were just kind of just sitting there talking about baseball and everything else. Ian, who's the, who's the guy that's kind of stood out for you that you d you didn't know coming in to Danbury? Um, I've really gotten to North Thor Meeks, our okay. uh, catcher. And that's a Rhett. Marshall, correct? Yes, and yeah. Rhett as well. Um, both of them live with us, so you know we've been getting to know each other pretty well, and and just you see, you see more face time with people, and it's, it's cool to see how other people do things and how things work. But a as a team, we've gelled really well together, I think, so far, and. You know, it, it's it's turning into a, you know a bunch of good old guys just going out there and playing and having fun. Yeah, I mean the common thing that you guys all have in you know things that you have in common is you play baseball. So that's what it is. Mike, how's everything going with the host family? Um, you live with a couple different people, so of course there's people that you don't know, and there's a family that you're trying to get used to. How's that been? It's been really well. Uh, you know, I had a host family last year, so it's kind of that was more of like a hit me then yeah you know, I'm kind of used to it and uh, you know, I'm living by myself with the host family so it's just me there I come in you know they're pretty accepting this ask me what I need get yeah. anything for me it's pretty nice they're a really nice family well that's good has the adjustment to being in Danbury you know moving from uh, Ohio or coming from Illinois to, to Danbury has it been smooth and are people in the community and you talk about the community a lot you know have, have people been giving and helpful to try to make your guys transition your stay here you know as smooth as possible yeah i think it's been great so far i mean every time you're out and you got a westerner shirt on people stop and say hi and you know ask how, how you're doing and so i think the community is starting to really rally behind the westerners and I, and I think it's great you know just just being able to stop at a place and you're at a restaurant and you know little kids asking hey how's it going you know yeah. and, and you know that ooh and off factor is it, it's great for us you know it helps us play and it's it's fun Nice. Make sure you guys are wearing Westerners gear at all yeah. times. Uh, we're here talking to uh, three pitchers from the Danbury Westerners, currently with a 6-4 and four record. Uh, Mike Hosschild is going to be pitching tonight uh, at Rogers Park, and you can come down and check it out right as soon as this is over. You're going to be half hour late, but it'll be what it is. Um, let's talk a little about, you guys keep talking about how you, you came to the NECBL to make the <coughs> transition uh, into the pros and eventually get drafted uh, to make that transition as smooth as possible. So is there anybody that you guys growing up are trying to emulate? Not really. I mean, just trying to you know, be your own person, I guess, but wow. I haven't really... You're the first person I've ever heard say that. I'm not, I don't really have a, like, a favorite player or anything. I just you know, I like to watch baseball, enjoy it a lot. So. There you go. Yeah. I think everybody's unique. Yeah. All right, there you, I'm going I'm to remember that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just grow up and you watch all the big league guys and, you know, you get that, oh, I want to I want to be him. Uh, and, you know, you look up to those guys and those role models, you know, whoever it is. And it, it's it's cool to finally see the dream in sight, you know, a little bit. And every next step that you make, it's, it's, a, it's a fun and surreal experience that you're getting the opportunity to do what you're doing every day. All right, Mike, give me somebody that at least you try to emulate or you like the way they pitch or, or anything. Um, well... You know, I guess there's a kid from Beaver Creek pitching for the Indians right now. Okay. He graduated with my sister, but, uh, you know, he gets a lot of ground balls, too, so <laughs> I guess I'll go with that. Well, that's good. I guess the University of Dayton uh, treats you guys pretty well to be your own individual. Is that, like, a motto for them? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Just, yeah. to, just be yourself. Know what you do well and know what you don't do well, so don't try to overdo it. What? Um, it's still early in the season. Like I said, you know, let's go back to 
how this team hasn't had success in the past uh, four years specifically, and this is the year that they're really excited about. But I mean, you can be excited about every year that comes on up because you get your slate wiped clean. What is it about this team why people are so excited? Um, probably we got Corey, the coach who recruited everyone. He got we got some pretty big schools, and they said they've had the, this is the most D1 players they've ever had. But uh, we had a, one kid drafted this year in the 21st round, Mike Anarumo. Yeah. So he's a big lefty. And, you know, there's a big hype about everything. So basically we just got to take it easy and do what we we're supposed to do, and everything should take care of itself. Yeah, it, it's, it's fun coming in. You know, this team is exciting. You know, there's a lot of energy in the dugout, guys gelling. And, you know, like Bryce said, there is a lot of talent on this team. There's, there's not one guy that's not going to be a contributor in it, to this team. So it, it's fun to see everyone from different schools doing different things, helping out in different ways. Mike, what do you think? Why um, why is everybody excited about this year? Uh, probably just because this is the most talent the Danbury team's ever had. You know, uh, coming in, everybody played well in their season. Our pitching staff looks really great. Fielders look great. Hitting looks great. You know, just talented all the way around. Let's talk about your guys' head coach, um, Chev. They call him Jamie Shevchik. He coached at a different school. You guys. You know, your your coach is trying to tell you, hey, this is what you need to do. And then you guys come out here to kind of uh, expand on your baseball career. And now there might be somebody trying to tweak a couple different things. How do you know what's right and what's wrong? And how has um, Chev made this transition from when I know what your head coach tells you and this is what I'm going to try to help you with and I'm not trying to change what you've done because you've obviously have gotten recruited by us for some reason. So how is the relationship with Chev going? Uh, Chev's a re he's a really cool guy. He's really relaxed. But... You know, when it's time to get down to business and actually, you know, when it's crunch time, then you got to get serious. But other than that, everything's really relaxed and you just go about your business and get, your, get what you're supposed to do done and then you're fine. Yeah, I mean, the, guy, the coaching staff's been great so far. They, they kind of leave the door open. If, if you want more, uh, if the door's open, come on in and they'll talk to you for, for hours on end or whatever yeah. you need. You know, hey, can you help me with this? So it's been great, you know. They really believe in finding out who you are and what you do best, and if that's what you do, that's what you do. You take what you what a little bit from everyone, and that's it. Mike has um, has Corey or, or Sean Fesh, you know, helped you in uh, trying to be that ground ball pitcher that you're you're attempting to be. Yeah, during the season, I had a lot of problems with uh, for fastball. You know, you kind of if you stay on top of the fastball with your fingers, I'll get more sink. Okay. But I would come around the side and it would just kind of stay on one plane. And it's a lot easier for hitters to hit that. And I would get hit up a little bit. But when I came in, right before, right before the game against Keene, uh, they saw that and they were like, you know, get on top of your fastball a little bit. You're coming on the side. And I started doing that. I just started getting a lot, a lot more sink on my fastball. And people just started beating into the ground all game, like every time I go out there and pitch. So it's just a so little bit So you were able to make that adjustment. The, also, the one thing that I hear. Um, in the NECBL, this is kind of a one-stop shop for scouts. So they don't need to travel. They, you know, University of Dayton might be out of their market, so now they get to see you guys or you know the guys from Kentucky or from Marshall, whatever it is. Um, is there any ever? Is there ever any added pressure, you know, on you guys that there might be a couple scouts there, you know, at the game, or is it just something that you guys are just accustomed to? Um, if there are any scouts there, I mean, I. I don't think we would even know. They, I think they normally dress just like any other person. Maybe just instead. You can't tell when they're like a radar this. Radar gun, maybe. But, <laughs> I mean, you're not really focused on that when you're in the game situation. Everything's kind of just you and the catcher most of the time. You so. and the catcher have the blinders on. Uh, yeah. Ian, it might be a little bit difficult for you because these guys, you know, have to go out and they have to start. But you're kind of waiting for your opportunity, so you might be able to notice. You know, maybe a scout or two sitting behind the yeah, plate. Yeah, you do. You do notice it a little bit. You know, I I had the luxury of going through that my uh, senior year of high school, so I got used to dealing with scouts and stuff. And it really just comes down to it's no different than your mom or dad sitting there watching. You know, you just let it. You just play and let it happen. If you can't get caught up in the in the radar guns or any of that, because yeah. you're not going to throw through it. You need yeah. to do what you do best, and if you do what you do best, you'll be all right. Well, that's a good way to put it. We're talking to the uh, three pitchers from the University of Dayton here on the Westerners Roundup. 
Uh, now, just like myself, I mean, I'm getting used to you guys, and so you guys are getting used to the coaches, you're getting used to the new players. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe your, your fondest baseball memory or, you know, why you chose baseball over, you know, soccer or over golf or, or football or something like that. Why, why did you stay with baseball or, you know, maybe you're, you hit a home run or maybe you pitch the no-hitter or any of those fond baseball moments that we can get, you know, accustomed to you guys and get to know you guys really well. Um, well, my uh, my dad actually bounced around in the White Sox organization and AAA and stuff. So, growing up, I he had me pitching off a of mount like in my garage when I was like <laughs> three or four years old. So, I mean, I guess I just grew up with it and came to love it. So, he didn't let here. you. He didn't let you choose another sport. We're gonna we're gonna play baseball. Uh, I mean, I was free to do whatever I want, but I kept coming back to baseball. So that's what I was the best at. So why not go for it? All right, Ian, what's your story? I'm actually kind of a different story. Um, you know, I was always a DH growing up, loved hitting, and uh, my junior year off of, you know, Dare, um, picked up a ball and threw off a mound, and you know, threw 90 miles an hour, so people thought, hey, there's there's something there to work with, so, you know, my story is kind of a little different than others, you know, just, just pitching your junior year and picking it up, so it's been great, it's, you know, learning the game, it's a little different than hockey growing up, but yeah. I love the game, love being in control. So are you a multi-sport guy? Uh, I did. I, I played hockey through high school for a little bit and then eventually dropped, dropped the skates and grabbed the glove for good. So. Well, I think there's a little more longevity in baseball yeah. than there is in hockey. Are you guys excited, both of you excited about the Chicago Blackhawks, Stanley Cup? Yeah. Surprised <laughs> Chicago hasn't burned down yet, to be honest. <laughs> it's just great for the city, you know, watching the Hawks. You know, the, the city really rallied behind them really well and helped them play. So it was cool to watch. Mike, from Dayton, your, your dad's, you said you've been the SID for a while, so you probably grew up around sports, around the University of Dayton, yeah. so you probably had uh, a lot of selection on sports. How did baseball come about? Um, well, I played baseball and basketball pretty much my whole life, and then I uh, started throwing a lot harder in baseball, so I just pretty much stuck with that. You know, my dad's a big baseball fan. He coached me all through, high school, or through middle school, high school, and then just... Mm -hmm kind of stuck with it. He taught me a lot about it. What's uh, what's your favorite team? Because Dayton's in, what, the northwest corner, so you're closer probably to Detroit I'm, than you are Cleveland? No, I'm closer to Cincinnati. I'm like an hour. Oh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. I forgot about the Reds. My yeah. buddy's a Reds fan. So you're a Reds fan? I don't like the Reds, no. All right, so what team do you like? I like the Angels. You like the Angels? Yeah, it's kind of... Just a there. random team? I, just like I have a buddy that lives in Boston. He's a, a huge L.A. Dodgers fan. I don't know. Sometimes you can't explain. It. I, in minor league ball, what's great is that when you get a front office together, uh, you have people that you know. We could be when I was working in Norwich, you know, Yankees fans, Mets fans, and there's like a Braves fan, a Phillies fan, there's a Marlins fan. It's just like, what? How are you a Marlins fan? You're from New Jersey. Yeah. You yeah. know, random things. But uh, you guys have had great success. You know, hopefully this can continue and uh, the excitement in the air can uh, prolong. But. Um, do you guys foresee this being a successful season? Yeah, it should be. If the hype is what it should be and everyone comes out and does what they're supposed to do, we should have a great year. Yeah, I just, I just see this, this team really just getting a full head of steam and just rolling and getting on a hot streak here, you know, with guys getting more innings and, and hitters getting used to wood bats and, you know, the guys that have stepped up, continuing stepping up. This could be a real exciting year. All right, well, I appreciate you guys stopping on in. Uh, we got a game that we got to get to. Uh, Mike Hosschild is going to be on the hill at Rogers Park and get all the information at danburywesterners.com. And then on Saturday, they're going to take on the Lowell All-Americans at 6.30. You can download your schedule or pick it up at Rogers Park. Danburywesterners.com. For the boys from the University of Dayton, I'm Brian Arizari. This has been the another edition of the Westerners Roundup. Enjoy the rest of your night.